Hello and welcome everyone. This is Type V3, and let me introduce you to the beautiful red-headed marksman from the Dai Garen Brigade. This is Neuromancer Yoko Littner. Developed by Yamato in conjunction with Cerberus Project, this is a new toy line with only one objective, to create a poseable figure combined with the quality and aesthetics of a statue. So let's see how they did. To start things off, I think it's plainly obvious to see that this iteration of Yoko is undoubtedly gorgeous. Of all the poseable Yoko figures on the market, this one easily takes it in the looks department. Although her character design is very simple, this figure contains a huge amount of subtle detail to emphasize quality. Her hair is wonderfully crafted with many lines to create shadowy details, and there's even a slight amount of extra curves throughout her body to bring out Yoko's feminine physique. Her boots, shorts, and scarf are also separate pieces from the figure, and give the appearance of these items actually being worn rather than fused to the body. It's also worth mentioning that although she's 8 inches tall, she doesn't fall into any specific scale, so she does end up being in a world of her own when displayed with other figures. Moving over, the paint finish on Yoko is simply stunning. A faint use of black shading brings out the edges of her hair, and I love the understated use of a peach pastel paint to line the curves of her midriff. What really draws the eyes, however, are her pink thigh-high stockings. They are mostly opaque and have this amazing effect by which all the edges look darker from every angle. Even the tops of Yoko's stockings are molded in tighter than her thighs, which I think is a nice realistic touch. It's not all perfect though. The joints behind her knees and elbows are odd looking, and the equally strange shoulder assembly is noticeable from certain angles. Thankfully, the scarf is large enough to hide them. Then there's some of her proportions which I don't agree with. Her chest is too large. Feel free to object, but I don't ever recall them being that huge in the anime. Then there's her shorts, which, again, I think are too short. Honestly, I'd rather have them longer, just so that more of her hip joints could be concealed. Yamato definitely nailed the face sculpt on this neuromancer. Yoko looks like she came right out of the anime, especially with that gentle expression. But it's her eyes that are truly the impressive part. Apart from their mesmerizing gaze, they can also be replaced with other pairs that look in different directions. Now, I'll admit that the whole gimmick is a bit freaky at first, but this is a great alternative to having multiple faces. Speaking of which, Yoko does come with another face, and this one is of her screaming. The mouth has a good amount of depth to it, but unfortunately you can't change the eyes on this one. However, you can add on her tactical glasses, which I've always thought looked awesome. One thing you want to know about Yoko is that these chopsticks are super fragile, so be very careful when handling this figure. Now, with that out of the way, let's check out articulation. The hair is on a nice ball joint, so that goes around. The neck has a ball joint at the top and base of the neck, so it can go, you know, a good amount of range there. Uh, the scarf does impede some of it, but it's okay. And the scarf is actually two pieces, not one, so that's pretty cool. Shoulders are interesting. It's like this, uh, it's like figure arts shoulders where there's a sleeve and a ball joint that goes into it. However, there's no real bicep cut. It's kind of at the top here, so you kind of can limit some poses. Single jointed elbow and the wrists are on a nice hinged uh, peg. So those are cool. Nice torso crunch, we'll say, swivel. It's well hidden. Um, nice waist. There's some hip joints there, single jointed knee, swivel at the ankle, and while there's not really a rocker, there's a hinge and you can maneuver that ball joint around to create the effect of a rocker joint, which is pretty neat. Now, articulation at its core is pretty good. It's exactly what you'd expect if you had a Figma figure, then it's very similar. And while that kind of sounds good, it's also kind of a disappointment, because when you think of something this big and this expensive, I expect it just a little bit more. Um, and Frankly, I'm kind of disappointed at the base of it. Uh, but the real issue with this figure is just the tightness of the joints and just how floppy she is. The big issue is the neck. This hair piece is so large and so heavy that if I were to raise this and not use the support of her back at the base of the hair, the neck would fall back. And that is problematic. I have tried to tighten the joint, but you know what, there has been no effect, and the same problem happens at the hips, and I don't know how to tighten those ones, so I'm pretty disappointed with that. I mean, if you pick her up, she kind of just flops around like that. And, of course, even though her legs are, or her feet are, quite large, and they do cover a good amount of space, she's not that stable. And so sometimes she'll end up falling over, or not sometimes, almost all the time. And that is the single biggest issue with Neuromancer Yoko, just, or Yoko, just her, her overall floppiness and sturdiness and stability. And I hate that about this figure. I was, it is probably, it, it makes this figure just so much more of a disappointment than, it doesn't matter how good she looks, if you can't really do anything with her, I mean, if she, fa if she fails at the fundamentals of being an action figure, then what's the point? 
but let's ignore that for now and check out what else she has to offer. Yoko comes with an asymmetrical pair of hands. Her left is a calmly open hand, while her right is a sort of fist that looks like it's meant to hold something. Well, that's because she comes with a single bullet that you can put in there. There's also a second set of chopsticks that she can wield. The only other pair of hands she comes with are her trigger fingers. Obviously, these are to wield her enormous sniper rifle, which is modeled after a Barrette M82. The finer painted details on the gun are superb, but the actual body is rather boring. It really could have benefited from a brushed metal or matte metallic finish. Strangely, it doesn't include that bright pink strap, so Yoko can't even store it on her back. And that's it for the accessories. However, her included display stand is seriously the highlight of the entire release. Firstly, the base is simple yet immediately iconic to all Gurren fans. Now the default assembly of the stand is very similar to that of a Tomashi stage, but there are additional configurations that make it much more impressive. The clasp can be replaced with a magnet that attaches to the one in Yoko's back. The magnet itself isn't quite strong enough to support the entire weight of the figure, but thankfully there's an attachment that acts as a secondary support clasp, and because you can tighten all the screws on the stand, it's easily able to hold any position. There's a lot to like about Noromancer Yoko, as well as an equal amount to dislike, but with a retail price of 11,000 yen, it's hard to really recommend her to anyone besides the hardcore Gurren Lagann completist. Visually, she's stunning to look at, yet on the other hand, her poor quality of articulation and extremely low accessory count quickly make you forget about any of her positives. One could argue that the awesome display stand mitigates any issues with Yoko's posability, but that's still not quite enough to get you to swallow that high cost. Cerberus Project and Yamato set out to make a figure that combines the aesthetics of a statue and the playability of an action figure, and at its core, they definitely achieve the basis of this goal. Yet, they fail to incorporate what really makes both these types of figures great. If you're primarily a statue collector, then chances are you're used to the expensive price, but some of her joints are just too awkward to ignore. On the flip side, action figure collectors will despise the floppy joints and won't like the high price, especially since Yoko is so accessory barren. An extra pair of hands, a Buddha figure, or even additional parts to recreate her look in the movies would have been greatly appreciated. Ultimately, this is a completely mediocre figure. And that's it. Having said that though, I've still found myself extracting quite a lot of joy out of Neuromancer Yoko. Perfect, she certainly is not, and she's basically been relegated to a statue in my personal collection. But let's face it, you're not going to get a prettier, posable version of the character anywhere else. So, if you've been able to see past her flaws up until this point, and you still find yourself very interested, then you're one of the few people that I can legitimately recommend this figure to. Anyways, this has been Type V3, and thanks for watching my first and probably last Neuromancer review. Hopefully I've been able to help those curious about this figure decide whether or not it's something worth looking into. And for those who are expecting just a little bit something more from this release, stay optimistic. Grand Logan is a big enough franchise and I'm sure it won't be too long before we see another opposable figure of this red-headed marksman.